Hi, my name is Noah Brown. I'm Claire Peterson. We represent Blessed Trinity Catholic High School's FBLA chapter, and this is our video presentation on financial statement analysis for Intel Corp in the 2023 year. Intel Corp was established in 1968 and rapidly became a leading company in the semiconductor industry. It currently trades on NASDAQ for $43 a share, and Intel believes its primary product, semiconductors, drive the supply and processing power, which controls much of the AI and technology we use today. We'll be analyzing Intel's financial standing based on four of its financial statements from the fiscal year 2023. We began with the balance sheet, which reports a company's assets, liabilities, and stockholder equity at the time of publication. Balance sheets can be evaluated based on three categories of investment quality measurements to determine whether or not to invest in a company. These measurements are working capital, asset performance, and capitalization structure. Looking at Intel's balance sheet, we were able to calculate Intel's fixed asset turnover ratio for 2023 to be 0.60. 0.60 is a sharp decrease in the ratio from previous years, an even more significant decrease than the past several years. This indicates that a considerable portion of Intel's long-term assets are not providing returns. This may in part be due to the fact that much of Intel's investment into fixed assets is recent, which would cause the ratio to be low since the assets have not fully developed into sources of revenue yet. However, the lack of returns from less recent long-term assets could be a cause for concern for Intel. We also used the balance sheet to find Intel's return on assets for 2023, and we had similar findings. Intel's 2023 ROA was 0.87%, which is significantly lower than the 2022 ROA, which was itself a severe decline from previous years. This indicates that Intel has recently concentrated investments on fixed assets, which, due to their recency, have not begun to generate returns for Intel yet. However, even though Intel appears to be in an investment cycle, such a low ROA may still indicate poor management of assets. Thank you, Claire. As Claire just discussed, a balance sheet fixates on a point in time, whereas an income statement, or often referred to as a P&L statement, shows how much revenue a company earns over a period of time, deducted by all costs and expenses associated with earning that revenue. At the top of an income statement, you would find total revenue deducted by cost of sales to find gross margin. Gross margin is then subtracted by operating expenses and income tax to find net profit or net loss on the final line. Due to sharp de declines of market demand in various subgroups of Intel Corporation focusing on supply of cellular network and artificial intelligence, intelligence production, Intel Corp had a net revenue of $54 billion, down 14% from 2022. By deducting all costs of sales, we arrive at a gross margin of $21.7 billion, making up 40% of all revenue, which is a generally healthy percentage. From gross margin, we then focus on all operating expenses such as R&D, MG&A, and restructuring, which accounts for 99.6% of gross margin and attributes to Intel's historical low of $93 million in operating income. Because of a benefit in taxes, Intel Corp arrives at a total income or profit at $1.7 billion, which is a 3% of net revenue. Next, we move to the cash flow statement, which summarizes the movement of cash into and out from a company. Cash flow statements measure how well a company is managing debt and operating funds and also measures how well a company generates cash. It reports cash from three sources, operating activities, investment activities, and financing activities. Looking at Intel's cash flow statement, we found that Intel had a net loss of $4 billion in cash in 2023. Intel spent more than twice as much cash on investing activities than it brought in from operating activities. Additions to property, plant, and equipment and purchase of short-term investments made up the majority of investing activities. While Intel should be striving for positive cash flow, the negative cash flow was primarily due to this investment in fixed assets and short-term investments. The fixed asset investment can increase long-term production, improve operations, or improve Intel's products, all of which would benefit the company over time. Similarly, the large expenditure of cash on short-term investments is not necessarily cause for concern because this year's cash flow statement shows that returns from previous short-term investments nearly met the amount invested in 2023. However, Intel must closely monitor its cash flow in the next year because negative cash flow of this magnitude is not sustainable for the company over an extended period of time. Our last financial statement that we will be analyzing is the stockholders' equity statement, which is a manipulation from the balance sheet equation. 
The statement of stockholders' equity is useful in showing the net assets a company holds at a point in time and the value of the company that belongs to the shareholders. It is essentially the net worth of the company, and it is built by common stock and retained earnings within a company's financials. In analyzing Intel Corporation's statement of stockholders' equity, we see $36 billion of common stock and capital invested publicly with $4 billion outstanding shares. If we find the average amount invested per share, it comes to a total of $8.66. In addition to all capital invested in the company, retained earnings totaled to $69 billion in 2023, decreasing by 2% from 2022. The retained earnings saw a dip due to the large sums of money totaling to over $3 billion paying dividends, which is a serious concern for investors and management. After taking capital and retained earnings into play, we can find the full stock holders equity of Intel Corp for 2023 of $110 billion, which as itself is considered financially healthy. From our analysis of financial statements, we concur that while Intel Corp is in a period of investment focused on improving research and development, cause for concern is not ruled out just yet. Total assets and revenue decreasing should serve as a caution for the company's overall financial stability. Intel Corp should work to analyze outcomes of said investments and if shown positive, continue with their operations regarding plant property and equipment and R&D. Conversely, if Intel stays on the road that it is on now, revenue may continue to decrease in valuation of the company as well. Our, gui our guidance is to monitor all costs and management surrounding investment and look for solutions of cash flow management, as well as not spending such high amounts on sectors who are not yielding high ratios of return on assets. As far as an investor's perspective, we advise that this is a sell and not a buy due to extremely low EPS and other analysis of financial statements. 